in chemistry, we do lots of chemical problem solving. We use equations, and we use something called dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is a way that we use units in order to help us decide what mathematical operation we are going to do to solve our problem. So units are extremely important. We want to make sure we write them with every number that we write. And we want to include them even in our calculations because this helps us decide if we've done our calculations properly. It also decide, helps us decide if uh, the number makes sense as an answer. So we do have to know how the units change when we do our calculations. So if we multiply two units together, then that unit becomes squared. Or if we multiply three of the same unit together, it would become cubed. If we add them or subtract them, the unit doesn't change. So in this case, we have centimeters. So if we add centimeters to centimeters, we get centimeters back. If we divide the same unit by itself, the units cancel out and we no longer have those units. So if we take centimeters and divide by centimeters, we get one or we get no unit. So using those criteria, they can help us in problem solving and that problem solving method is called dimensional analysis. It sounds complicated, but really it's just using the units to help us do the math. So we want to set up and think about how we're going to proceed in our conversion or in the way that we change the unit. So we want to make sure that we find a relationship if we're going to convert inches to centimeters. We have a relationship that says one inch is exactly equal to 2.54 centimeters. Now one inch is actually was changed so that this is an exact conversion. And so after the four, there's an unlimited number of zeros. We're going to write a conceptual plan. We're going to start with our inches, and using that relationship, we're going to convert to centimeters. And that equivalency becomes a conversion factor. So because we want to cancel the inches, the inch part goes on the bottom of our relationship, and the centimeters are on top because that's what we want to end our problem with. That's what we want, the units we want our answer to have. So you may want to use a systematic approach to problem solving. The steps that are laid out by the book start by sorting the information, figuring out what you're given and what you're trying to find, design a strategy, so what are the steps you're going to take in order to, to figure out the answer? You apply the steps to solve the problem. And then most importantly, check the answer to make sure that it makes sense. A lot of times it's pretty easy to forget the check the answer part. But this is the part that helps you decide whether or not you've reasonably done the problem and that the answer that you've gotten is correct. Let's try an example. Let's convert 1.76 yards to centimeters. So in this case, we are given 1.76 yards. We are trying to find centimeters. So our conceptual plan, and there's many plans that we could choose. So you may think of a different way to do it, and that's perfectly fine. You could go from yards to feet, feet to inches, and then inches to centimeters. Now, the reason I chose this way is because I know the inch to centimeter conversion um, from the metric the English 
by heart, but you could come up with a different plan. So what are our relationships? In this case, to get from yards to feet, we know one yard is three feet. There, one foot is 12 inches. And one inch, 2.54 centimeters. So now we can put this, use this to solve the problem. So 1.76 yards. We want the yards to cancel. So we need to put the one yard on the bottom, three feet on top. That way our yards cancel. We take the feet. We want the feet to cancel now because if we did our math, we would end up with our answer in feet, but we want it in centimeters, so we're going to keep going. So one foot is 12 inches. We cancel our feet because we have one on top, one on the bottom, and now we want to cancel our inches. So we put the inches on the bottom. 2.54 centimeters on top. Our inches cancel. We multiply by anything across the top. We divide by anything on the bottom since it's one, it's not going to change our answer. And we end up with 160.9344 centimeters. Now we have to round to make sure that we have the proper number of significant figures. So in this case, the 2.54 is an exact conversion on limited significant figures. The 12 inches in one foot is an exact conversion. Three feet in a yard is an exact conversion. So our significant figures are determined by our initial number. So we would round this to 161 centimeters. Now does this answer make sense? We want to check to make sure it makes sense. We know our units are correct and centimeters are much smaller than yards so we would expect to have a, a larger number more of them than we did with yards. So this does make sense. So here is one for you to practice using conversion factors. Pause the video, see if you can set up the dimensional analysis, come up with the answer for 30 milliliters into quarts. Okay, so what we're given is 30 milliliters. We're trying to find quarts. We're given our relationship. One milliliter is a thousandth of a liter, and one liter is 1.057 quarts. So that means that our conceptual plan, we want to go from milliliters to liters to quarts. So let's set that up. We want the milliliters to cancel. So we're going to put our one milliliter on the bottom. Our 0 0.001 liters on top. Our milliliters will cancel. Now we want to find quartz. So we're going to put our one liter on the bottom so that it cancels liters and 1.57 quarts on top and again to do the math you multiply across the top you divide by anything that is on the bottom so our answer would be 0 0.0317 quarts now we want to round we started with three significant figures. 
Our answer has three significant figures. So our answer, we could leave this as 0 0.0317. Our units are correct. We were left with quarts as an answer. And milliliters are smaller than a liter, so we would expect to end up with something smaller than a quart. Now, the book lays out a very detailed way to do the problem. As you get more and more practice, you may not have to include all those steps in order to get the problem solved.